Welcome to Something to Talk About, a uh, frequent program here at the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center, almost all online, but occasionally we have hybrid activities as well. And just to note that starting in January, we're going to move the time for this program from 1130 to 130. 130 Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will be the normal time, uh, which means that if you would like to have lunch with the executive director, I will be free for lunch, and I'm happy to take right. you out to Meals on Wheels uh, right here at the Senior Center. So give me a call, and we might be able to have a luncheon meeting. Something to Talk About is sponsored by Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island, which offers innovative and compassionate care. You can learn about day stay and respite programs in addition to their memory care uh, and the fact that they're building uh, additional independent and assisted living as well. Call 360-689-4314. Schedule a tour. I'd also like to, before we get in this in earnest, acknowledge that we are on the ancestral homelands of the Suquamish people, the people of the clear salt water. We are uh, grateful for the hospitality of our Salish relatives and neighbors. We honor them. And we um, would like to just take a moment to recognize that this that they have been here uh, caring for this land since time immemorial. Today, we're going to uh, have a lovely discussion with our favorite folks from the Island Volunteer Caregivers, a group that uh, we are very closely aligned with. IVC helps a lot of uh, people on the island get to places and experience things and, um, well, master the art of aging well. And uh, that's something that we share as a goal and objective. And we have... Uh, shared the services of Katie Auger, who is the uh, community resource navigator uh, for the last few years. I know that we're going to make a little bit of an adjustment uh, come um, come the new year because, you know, times change and needs change, but uh, we are not going to lose connection with Katie and with the IVC as she moves to working full-time or all of her time with IVC, but the connections between our two organizations are strong. We have Katie here. We also have Lynn Murphy, who is uh, in charge of life enrichment at the um, Island Volunteer Caregivers, and we'll learn a little bit about both of those things and other programs they have going. So uh, I'll just uh, turn the microphone over to you, Katie, as you like to say to your guests, and uh, and I'll ask you to. Um, Introduce yourself and Lynn maybe a little bit more and talk about uh, the many programs that IVC has been doing and some new programs that have just started recently. Yes, thank you so much, Reed, uh, for that fantastic introduction. You really do have a knack for this, you know, <laughs> you're a natural. <laughs> um, as Reed said, um, I'm Katie Auger. I am the community resource navigator um, and have had the absolute pleasure of working with the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center and Island Volunteer Caregivers uh, for the past almost four years now. Um, as Reed mentioned, we're going to be doing just a little transitioning um, with my role, but I am still very much going to be a part of the community center. Um, it's been so important with our two organizations that we work very closely together, as Reed had mentioned, um, and that will absolutely continue. So um, I don't expect to see a lot of changes there other than maybe we grow even closer and continue to uh, do the work that we do um, as closely as we've done it. Um, so yes, so in my role as community resource navigator um, through the Senior Center and also with IVC, what I have done um, and what I will continue to be doing is meeting with folks to talk about resources. Um, this could be anything from, you know, people looking for fall prevention resources to where do I go to better understand my Medicare benefits. Um, and people who are looking to access IVC services, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about. And I'm also going to have my wonderful colleague here, Lynn, um, help share some things about IVC. Um, but for anyone who's not familiar with Island Volunteer Caregivers, um, we really see our organization as one that brings people together through life enriching connections. Um, we have an incredible volunteer base of folks who will do things like driving people to their medical appointments, um, picking up groceries for folks, um, getting prescriptions, um, and also doing companionship visits. So, um, you know, people who could maybe just use a little more connection. Um, we have folks that will come and do visits, um, some respite. 
Um, so that's that's really the core of what we do, but we also offer so many different programs. Um, and right now I would love to um, have Lynn um, take over the mic. Um, Lynn, again, is our life enrichment coordinator and runs an incredible uh, program through IVC. Um, and as Reed mentioned, um, works also with the Senior Community Center uh, on a few special projects. So Lynn, please tell us more about what you do. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, well, I have the best job in town, I think. I have the most fun and I get to inter uh, connect with so many of our care receivers and our volunteers. It's it's very rewarding. And we always say we never know who get who has more fun and, and more rewards in these jobs than whether it's the volunteers, the care receivers or the staff. So um, I started about, it'll be eight years in February. Um, and at that time, IVC was basically providing transportation, but a fellow named Dick Goff, who had been a president of our board and uh, had become a volunteer, started what he called music appreciation. And he's a, he's a music lover of every kind of musical genre you can imagine, very knowledgeable. And so once a month, Dick was providing uh, a music program, mostly it was over at Madrona House, and it was for you know, mostly people that residents there, but he felt there was a need to expand life enrichment uh, for IBC. So they hired me to develop this life enrichment program and it sort of became a, a monster, uh, but it's been a wonderful monster. And we have lots of fun. We, we have a movie group, we have an opera group, we have a creaky knees. Now we have two creaky knees walking groups, uh, one that I call my trailblazers and one that I call, you know, the short haulers. So um, it, it, does, it doesn't matter your ability or capabilities will get you out walking somewhere. We have museum tours. We do shopper specials, which we often do with the senior center once a month. Um, we attend a lot of performing arts. We do arts and crafts projects, um, lectures, museum tours. It, you know, and, and I think I, out, I outreach to our folks and say, what else can we do? Um, what other things would you be interested in? We have sort of some set groups in those uh, areas that I just mentioned. But for example, uh, this year someone came to us and they said, we'd really like to take our little, you know, five and six year olds and do a Halloween parade. So we set that up and it was really fun. And again, I don't know who had more fun. And it was really multi-generational because we had the little kids all dressed in their Halloween costumes. And then they went to the very couple of residence halls and there were the residents dressed in their own costumes and they couldn't have enjoyed it more. But the other uh, group was the moms and the moms came back to me and said how much they enjoyed it, seeing their kids interact with you know the older generation. And I think it could have gone on all day. We really had a lot of fun. Um, another uh, opportunity that came to us this year that I think we'll see grow is uh, we had an opportunity through Bloedel to work with their uh, artist in residence program and the artist at the time was Naomi Khan and she is a poet and she provided I mean we did this so fast you know it made my head spin but we got it together and we went out to the tea house at Bloedel and we had about 12 people who uh, participated in a Poetry, work, poetry workshop with Naomi. They loved it so much. I had one of our care receivers say to me, can we do this every week? And I said, no, we can't do it every week. But let's see if we can't provide some kind of a writing program coming up um, this next year. So I'm working on that. Uh, something else that has come to our attention is our men in our group who they long for something and they may not want to go to movies or operas or do arts and crafts. But they, what I've heard back from them is that they would like like a men's coffee conversation group. And a few years ago, we started one of those for men. We had a particular gentleman who uh, knew a lot of our volunteers and he was struggling health-wise. And we thought it would be good for him to, to get together once a week with, with his old friends. So they started, I think they, his name was Bob Carr and they started the club and they called it the Carr Club. And so they met every, every week and Bob ultimately passed away. And this group to this day is still going, but they're, you know, they've become a cohesive group and, and they don't necessarily want to expand that. But I think we need to have another uh, men's conversation group. So maybe it's a coffee that meets once a week somewhere else. So we'll be working on that. Um, 
And we do a lot of things with our community like BEMA. We work with BEMA. We have we go to their smart films uh, uh, program every month. Uh, we do their jazz festival. Um, we do their we, we do every time they have a new exhi exhibition there. We get a tour often with Greg, which is such a treat. But we'll get one of their docents to take us on a tour. So, you know, it's it's a wonderful range of of activities for for I don't think there's much that we can't provide and I always say to folks if you if you have something you'd like to have us look into please let me know I did have one gentleman ask me about could we do a fly fishing group no I said <laughs> that was a little bit out there but anyway it's a lot of fun and and the hardest thing for me is our numbers are really growing in terms of our participants and you know, trying to find rides. For example, this weekend I've got two events. One is a holiday music concert, and one is a, the opera. They overlap, and uh, I've got six people in that group that have big walkers that need to have somebody transport them. And it's hard for me to find enough volunteers who can either lift a walker or have a big enough car to, to handle it. So some challenges. Well, I I'd just like to overcome. pop in here. I just like to pop yeah. in here that. Uh, we have talked, and you may have already mentioned this, but the idea of using the senior center bus, uh, just I'll throw that out that if there's a program where you know that there are a few people that it might benefit to use the bus, please reach out to us and see if we might be able to do something cooperatively. We now yeah, have, thanks to, thanks to a grant from AARP, we were able to train another bus driver. So we have even more flexibility um, in, uh, in responding to things. Yeah, and Reed, I can't thank you enough. We did start with you when we when our shoppers got to be too many, we came to you, and now that's really become a, a standard program there at the senior center and for us, the shoppers special once a month. And then this this month, I asked if we could go. We, we'd like to go to Paul's Bow and look at the Christmas shops and shop and have ice cream, and we had probably too many for that. So Reed has graciously uh, offered the bus for us again, and we've got I think a pretty good group going to that. So. Thank you, Reed, as always. Well, I feel like, you know, one of the things that, that I've talked with Joanne, the executive director about is that uh, in many cases, the kind of work that you do at IVC oh. is one to one. And a lot of what we do at the center is one to many. So if there's an instance where there's a program that you're doing that is uh, where that one to many idea works, uh, mm -hmm. please don't hesitate to reach out. And of course, in the same way, uh, when there's something that, that is really a one-to-one, -one, um, and I think about uh, uh, some of the things that you're you're doing in terms of reach out, support, uh, your wellness program, things like that, we're happy to say, you know, let's work with IVC to make that happen. Yeah, it's a wonderful partnership, and um, we're very grateful that we are all on that same page and all good people working for the same goal. So thank you. That's one of the things that I that I really love um, between IVC and BISC is um, I feel like it makes us that much more inclusive um, mm -hmm. because we have folks that maybe overlap that use both the BISC services yeah. and IVC services. Um, and that looks different for different people. You know, some folks are here to come to the fun activities. They love going to the opera. Um, you know, they love doing yoga um, and they, they wanna be able to do all of those things. Um, and sometimes what the barriers are for folks could be transportation. So we have volunteers who will drive people down to the center so that they can participate in activities. And so therefore they're signed up with IVC, they're part of our organization and they're able to also be an active community member um, at BISC as well. And I, again, I just, I, I love that we have that overlap um, and that also that there are certain activities that, that work well, um, having that more one-on-one, -on -one, like Reed said. Um, and then there's also the um, many to one um, at the center. So it just really creates a lot of opportunity uh, for, for folks to be involved, to be able to participate. And um, yeah, I think it's a wonderful thing. And like Lynn said also, we're always happy to, uh, uh, you know, consider new ideas and new activities. And um, I think it's always fun. Sometimes again, you get the uh, fly fishing that might be just a bit beyond what we can do, but <laughs> hey, it never hurts to ask, right? <laughs> yeah, I had I had somebody ask me about, could I please start up some sort of a, of a dating app here? <laughs> oh, I, I said, it. well, I'll tell you how we do dating around here. It's like, show up and participate in the activities and maybe you'll meet somebody. Yeah. 
One, one of my favorite stories of, of just a request that came in, I had gone to do a presentation for the visually impaired persons group that was here on the island. And this was early on when I first started and the president said, well, we, we've really been wanting to know if we could maybe get a group together to go in and see the Terracotta Warriors at the C Seattle Center. Now remember, this is a visually impaired persons group. Many of them are completely blind, but they wanted to go in to the Terracotta Warriors exhibit. And I was pretty new then, and I just thought, oh, sure, we could, we'll figure out a way to do it. Well, we did, and we took them. It was the most fascinating experience, one of them that I've had here, because I can't think of any group that would that appreciated it more. And they had our volunteers would go along with them and read the you know, the informational signs to them. And then the they would let them get up as close as they could so that they could see them to the best degree that they could. And I think we had about 12 people and I think we had four volunteers and it was it was quite a wonderful experience. So that was that was one of my favorites. <laughs> I I love it. A great example of Lynn pulling off <laughs> <laughs> an incredible adventure for for a lot of folks um i know that's one that's been talked about for for quite some time as as quite yeah, the adventure that was a good one. yeah you know, lynn if you ever need anybody to do that kind of thing again i would be happy to go and be the well, reader of the sign i think that would be great fun i do that with my friend Anne. i'll read the sign for her sign or stuff for her and you know that's i, I learned so much by doing that myself yeah. you know yeah. And Sheila, I think you've gone with us to the museum, like when we go to Bema, and, you know, often we have people who are visually impaired or they can't read the little tiny writing. So I know people do often offer to help read and you learn so much more. So thank you. You're on my list, you know. <laughs> I better be. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. We're, we're recruiting more volunteers as we speak. Right. <laughs> so I know, Sheila, you've always been a wonderful supporter. So oh, to the max. Um, to the max. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did want to just mention a few of our other programs and actually a couple of new ones that um, we we have just started recently. Um, and one of them is the caregiver support group um, that is now taking place um, every other Tuesday at Island Volunteer Caregivers. And so this is a, a group that is for individuals who are caring for a loved one um, and are just looking to um, share ideas and resources to get some support um, and just have some time and, and hold space to um, just talk through some things. Um, you know, caregiving um, obviously has um, a lot of challenges, but there's also a lot of um, beautiful moments that, that comes as part of caregiving. And um, it's just a really great space to, to come together. Um, so if folks are listening and hearing this and are interested in learning more about the group, um, you can call us at IVC. Um, and this also goes with any of the other uh, programs that we've talked about as well. And if you're just interested in getting signed up with Island Volunteer Caregivers, and our number is 206-842-4441. And in case uh, your sound cut off at that moment, you can always call the Senior Center as well to get that information and how to reach us um, at 206-842-1616. Um, and just to talk a little bit more about um, the onboarding process for IVC and, and you know, who, who can sign up with us, um, you know, we, we really want to make it a very simple thing. Um, we know that uh, transportation on the island can be very difficult um, if you don't have a vehicle. Um, so we really want to keep it a low barrier, um, you know, way to sign up for for IVC. So we don't have any income requirements. Um, it's really just, you know, if if there's a need, if it if transportation is a barrier, um, if you're if you're needing a bit more um, life enrichment and wanting to get involved, but again, don't necessarily have transportation or could just use a little bit more support when doing those activities. Um, what we do is we um, have an in-home assessment to get signed up. And um, you know, I always say it's not meant to be a, a real serious, intimidating uh, process. It's really an opportunity for us to sit down one on one to get to know you a little bit more to get to talk about our programs and how they work. Um, and then from there we get you signed up and you can you can use our services so long as they're needed. Um, let's see what else was I Katie, gonna Katie, oh, I, yes. I'll just add, let me add one thing. Uh, I we get calls on occasion or I'll run into people and they'll tell us they have some needs. They don't realize that we also take people off island. So if you have doctoring in Silverton, Silverdale or Bremerton or even Seattle, although that's a tougher call for us lately, 
Um, but we do provide transportation to those areas as well. And also, um, people don't realize that you can come on temporarily. Let's say you've had a hip replacement or a broken ankle and you need help walking your dog or you need somebody to pick up medications for you. We do all of those things for people, you know, and, and any age. It doesn't have to be just seniors. So um, keep that in mind as well. Yes, thank you, Lynn. Very, very important details. Yeah, exactly. So we do go off island for medical appointments, which we know is a really uh, big deal for folks. Um, and again, um, yeah, so thank you. Well, well said, Lynn. Um, I was also going to add, and of course it just slipped my mind now. Um, oh, I, was, I wanted to mention too, just a couple of our other programs. Um, and Lynn, do you mind sharing um, a bit more we, about our medical note-taking program and our um, pet therapy visits that, that, we've, that we've taken on? Some of these programs we really had to uh, put on hold during the height of the pandemic, but they're starting to come back now, which we're thrilled with. Um, so right. yeah, so Lynn, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about those programs. Yeah, we realized several years back that people were going to their medical appointments and then, you know, they didn't remember what they had heard or their doctor told them or uh, they had other limitations. And so um, Rita Ellsbury at the time was our executive director and she reached out to a number of uh, people who had medical backgrounds. We have several retired nurses or people who have EMTs or whatever medical experience. And she started the program of, of medical note takers. And so if you are going to go to a doctor's appointment and you don't have family or someone to go to, you can ask for a medical note taker and they will go with you. Uh, they have a form that they fill out. They, they really are just there to take notes. And then they come back to our office and they put it into our system so we know what the information was. And then it, it is very confidential, their form is destroyed. But it has been so helpful. The people who've used it come back to us and say, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I wouldn't have remembered half of that. So that's been a great program for us. And we're trying to increase the number of, of people doing that. So that's also another way you can volunteer. You don't always have to just drive people. Um, you can just participate if you want to in life enrichment or medical note taking. And we've had several volunteers um, over the last few years when we started the pet therapy program. I call it Pet Pals. And uh, they, we have a program whereby you can get your dog or I guess a cat, if you, I don't know, bird, what you've got, but mostly I think it's for dogs. Um, they get signed up uh, with an agency that, that, that gives them a little certificate. They, they, they take them and train them and get them to, you know, make sure that they're appropriate for the needs. And then we, you can call and say, I'd like to have a visit with a pet pal. And when we started that, we had, we had a big, um, black lab and we had a little tiny dog that would dance in circles and he'd, he'd dance and his tail would go around in circles too. So we had so much fun with that. And the, the volunteers who were lending their dogs, that's really all they did at IVC. They were our, our pet pal program. So um, both of those dogs we don't have with us anymore. So we're looking for some new ones. If you have a, a pet that you'd like to get into this program, it's a lot of fun. And you can either go for a one-on-one -on -one with someone in their home uh, we also would take them into a residence hall and, you know, go into their community room and several people could come down and enjoy them. So, yeah, that, those are both great programs. Sounds like Bogey would like to do it. Yeah, you can, he's here. We have the do mascot dog who now needs, thinks he needs to go outside. So I'm sorry, he's barking in the background. <laughs> yeah, no, I, thought, be, I thought he was saying that he would like to be part of the pet therapy. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think he would pass the test, Sheila. <laughs> I don't know. He oh, he's a, a mind of his dog, own. mom. He has a mind of his own. Yeah, we'd we'd miss him too much here at the office if he was <laughs> always always out and about. He's he's here for yes, our drop-in he guests. Yes, he is <laughs> our mascot. Yes. Um, I, I did just want to take a moment and I'm glad Lynn brought that up. So um, for anybody who's listening, uh, maybe you're thinking, wow, Island Volunteer Caregiver sounds like an amazing organization um, and I'd love to get involved, but I'm not at the point where I'm needing any of those services. Um, but the good news is you don't have to use us for the services. You are welcome to join us as a volunteer. Um, and there's so many wonderful opportunities. Um, you know, like I said, we're always looking for volunteer drivers but that is not all that uh, we use our volunteers for. Um, we have volunteers, again, that do our medical note-taking programs, uh, that do our pet therapy program. 
Um, we also have volunteers that will help care or call our um, care receivers to do check-ins or to do companionship visits. Um, so if any of this is sounding interesting to you, um, we hope that you'll reach out. Um, I, one of the things that I think is really, really great <laughs> um, is that um, we don't have any uh, time requirements when it comes to volunteering with IVC. So, you know, if you decide to sign up with us, you're not going to be required to volunteer five hours a week. Um, it's really whatever schedule works for you. Um, we send out our requests in a daily email and our volunteers take a look over those requests and then they let us know which ones they're available to do. So if you have one hour a month, if you have one hour every two months, um, it's all great. It all helps us out. Um, people make such wonderful connections. Um, Lynn, I know that's something we hear all the time from our volunteers, from our care receivers, um, are just about these wonderful connections that are made. And whether it's just a one time, you know, driving to Silverdale for an appointment, um, or whether it's somebody who does repeat visits uh, for somebody who's, um, you know, at a, at a care facility uh, or living in a senior living, um, it's really, it's all about the connections. That's really the heart of who we are. Um, and it's it's just a really great opportunity to get to know others in the community um, and, and really build these wonderful relationships and just to show uh, care for one another um, in our community. And you know, Katie, you mentioned uh, phone calling and during the pandemic, we really did have to make a huge shift. We, we were all working at home. Uh, we pivoted about around every single activity that we do here, but one of the programs that we started at that time, which is now we're going to continue it because it was so successful, was called Phone Buddies. And the Phone Buddies, I mean, these are people who didn't know each other at all. He just said, okay, I'll call Mary and John and Frank and so-and-so. And they started calling them and it was fascinating the relationships that started to grow from that and we had people saying well i'll be glad when the pandemic is over so that i can meet you know my phone buddy so um that was such a good program we've decided to to continue that somehow another one other thing i would just like to mention is that we also provide respite services i don't know if you've mentioned this katie or not but let's say you are at home and you are caring for a care a loved one and you know, you, you just can't do it 24 seven. You'd like to have a break. You'd like to go to a movie. You'd like to go shopping. You'd like to just go have lunch with a friend. We can have a, one of our volunteers go over and sit with your family member and you can have some time off. And, and sometimes we do that on a regular basis, like maybe every Wednesday or twice a week or whatever that would meet your needs. So a couple of other activities. Yeah. I can say that I can say that I'm a poster child for this organization. I just think <laughs> it, I have gotten so many um, mm -hmm. joyful times with Lynn and, and Katie and the folks. And I just, um, I, I am so grateful for IVC. Um, I, I keep talking to people about it up and down the gazoo to tell people. I was working training at the front desk at the senior center the other day and somebody came in and asked a question. I said, oh, IVC. And we talked about it. You know, <laughs> so spread the word, spread the world. The one thing that you, you haven't mentioned are the flowers in the summertime. Oh, oh my goodness. Right. And, and I've gotten so many, these flowers that arrive at my, my front door here at my, my apartment. Oh, I mean, it, it makes a lot of difference to people. It really does. And it's just not me. I've heard so many people say how joyful it is to have the color and in their, their home. Yeah, we've been doing flowers from the heart for, I mean, I think, and certainly as many years as I've been here and maybe even before that a couple of years, but um, we have flowers donated from, we don't even know where they come from. We just put out the word and people bring flowers to the steps of the Eagle Harbor Congregational Church every morning. We have volunteers who then come in and take them and arrange them and then put them in beautiful vases. And then we have another group of volunteers who come in at noon and pick them all up and deliver them all around the island. And every year we deliver approximately, you know, 500 bouquets a year so that one year it got up to 700 and somebody said that's too many <laughs> that's it but uh, and this this last couple of years we did do it during the pandemic we went to i think three days a week katie i believe and this year i think we just were doing it three days a week it's a lot of work but it is again a labor of love and some of those people that volunteer have done it for years and that's all they do for ivc they do the flowers from the heart program so if you're a flower person there you go we can bring you on to that program 
Exactly. And another opportunity to volunteer or another uh, becoming a part of IVC, um, you, you can expect to receive one of those bouquets. Um, thank you, Sheila, for, for yeah. bringing that up. And, and thank you for being our, our poster child. I know you are such an incredible <laughs> advocate for um, and a <laughs> cheerleader for our organization. And um, you are the perfect example of who IVC is, um, who we yeah. are. Um, so we we are so grateful to have you a part of uh, our, our family here at IVC. We actually have quite a number of people who do our food deliveries, and including we also help helpline deliver foods during the pandemic. We started that. We also started the Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas dinner oh, programs yes. that the, uh, the um, Sportsman's Club used to do, but we picked that up and we have continued that through this year. I'm not sure what will happen going forward but we did do thanksgiving this year and we will be doing christmas so if you need a christmas meal you know you can call ivc and get signed up for that too but yeah yeah good, yep. and you can call the sheila she has oh, the best yeah. memory <laughs> <laughs> better than mine <laughs> um Yes, I, I'm glad you mentioned the holiday meal as well. And yes, you can also call the Senior Community Center. Um, that meal is going to be taking place on Friday, December 23rd. Um, there is an in-person option that's going to be happening at St. Cecilia's um, at 11.30, I believe, 11.30 to 12.30. Um, and for folks who would prefer to receive a meal at home, um, Island Volunteer Caregiver Drivers will be delivering meals to folks as well. So if you're interested in in that meal, please uh, give give us a call. Um, we would we would love to have you. We'd love to offer you that meal. Um, I just want to also um, quickly add here. Um, I know Lynn had mentioned again about our phone buddy program, um, which is. Um, becoming part of um, our wellness program um, that is going to be rolling out here shortly. Um, this is the program that was made possible by the Bainbridge Community Foundation. Um, we were awarded a grant. We are so grateful uh, for this uh, grant to have this program. And really what this, the, the heart of it is, is, you know, as many of us probably saw during the pandemic or many of us experienced um, that um, obviously we became very isolated. Uh, loneliness became a major, major issue. Um, and even though things are opening up again and there's more opportunities to get out and about, um, we recognize that it can still be really challenging. The, the impact that, um, you know, not getting to socialize um, has had on us is, is, uh, is a real big issue. And so, we're looking to use this program as a way to really reach out to folks um, to get people connected and just to offer support. So um, we'll be sharing more and more about this program as we move forward. But um, I just did want to make mention of that um, as well as, as a new uh, exciting program uh, coming about. <laughs> 